Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Well, we're finally home. Um, it was quite a, an interesting <laughs> adventure, to say the least. Um, everything just went wonky after Mark's car, um, when the alternator failed on his car. We were held up in um, a hotel for a couple of days, waiting for parts to arrive. And yeah, everything was fine. Um, got the car serviced and back on the road and you know Mark had his agenda that he intended to follow and he tried to uh, make sure that he was able to do that. Now we had um, decided that we would be traveling for about 10 days and it turned out to be more like two weeks. So it was a little longer and um, uh, uh, more and a little bit more exciting I guess or, or <laughs> a little different than what we thought but we did have time to visit with our friends of course we cannot go down south without stopping in to see uh, our friends Joey and Sherry and uh, they have turned into the crazy chicken people <laughs> two years ago the, when we were down and I think that was the first attempt for uh, the, the, the lady of the house to um, start um, getting chickens in and getting a little, you know, get, having her son-in-law build a chicken house for her. And from that, she has gone to quite a, an extensive bit of knowledge that she's gained in the last two years. And she's more into breeding the chickens. And I don't know what she intends to do af with them after she breeds them. But her intent is to breed, and she's got about 12 little uh, chicken enclosures uh, with the breeding pairs in each one and uh, she was going through naming each one that she had every every pair and uh, one little breeding house was for the three little chickens that were picked on that she didn't want to um, destroy or, or butcher I guess would be the word but yeah she kept three of them in one little pen and she, one had a cross beak, but, you know, it was able to eat, so she decided to keep it and not have any issues with it. And she is finally beginning to, to um, sell a few eggs, probably not many, and I was encouraging her to do so. And she's quite happy to sell just enough eggs to pay for the feed. And... <laughs> With the amount of chickens she's got, I don't know. She's got to have at least 40, 50, 60 chickens. Hard to say. Uh, wasn't able to count, but uh, from starting from two or three or five or six, two years ago, little babies, she's got quite the uh, brood there <laughs> these days. And, of course, family members have taken uh, to having their own pet chicken, her, her husband, <laughs> Definitely has his little baby pet chicken that uh, while well, she brought in the house because she it was one that was hatched from a pair and it was tiny and it um, could have um, the raccoons could have got it so she brought it in the house and, and then that one became a pet and then her daughter has also got pet guineas I believe so yes from her starting her little chicken. They've got quite the menagerie, I guess you would call it. Uh, five Siamese cats, a couple of dogs, all these chickens, I, and a few other cats, I think. Quite, quite the uh, brood of animals. But then again, they've got the space for it, so it doesn't uh, hurt at all. And of course, we went out to dinner together a couple of nights. And uh, yeah. They didn't want us to leave, but such is life, you know, you enjoy each other's company uh, and uh, hopefully there'll be a next time and perhaps even a bit longer visit the next time around. But we'll just have to play that one by ear. And of course, getting back, we took uh, the evening to just chill out and relax and have a early night and Mark's off again with a friend because they had planned to go out to a specific event today anyway, so uh, that's fine. I think his friend is driving. I think that Mark's probably a little bit tired of driving. So I've been doing the 
checking around the house, paying bills, uh, taking care of a few odds and ends. But I did leave everything clean, so not a big deal. I had to water my plants, so <laughs> they were doing okay. Most of them don't uh, suffer from being a little bit dry, so that was fine. And then I went to check my mail, and I had uh, an unexpected letter, I guess, from uh, a lady in Quebec, Quebec, Canada. And she sent me a little note with uh, a return envelope. I guess she wanted me to uh, write the response and return it. But her question is a little um, detailed, and and a lot of it is based on your own uh, preferences, I suppose would be the word. Okay, I did check the French translation, and I think that she is asking me, when do you, how do you decide when to freeze dry and when to dehydrate? Now, I have been dehydrating for a number of years, so I'm fairly familiar with dehydrating and what I like dehydrated and what I don't. Um, I still think it is a matter of preference and uh, there are, uh, my, my freeze dryer is still a new um, tool for me and I'm still learning on what I prefer freeze dried and what I don't. Now people have different uh, um, preferences, I guess is the word, definitely on what to do with each one of them. And of course, if you don't have a freeze dryer, then all you're gonna do is dehydrate. So um, my preference for, okay, my preference for freeze drying would be, uh, I, I love, we love our strawberries and bananas and peaches, peaches are my favorite. I know a lot of people love to freeze dry candy. I haven't attempted that yet, but uh, th they turn out quite nice, and they're a very popular item to uh, give to the children. Um, what else? Oh, I made a beautiful batch of chicken soup, and I freeze-dried that, and it turned out quite well. I love to freeze-dry eggs. That is awesome. And uh, whole milk you can freeze-dry, or even skim milk, so you can have... Uh, shelf life milk that lasts a long time and shelf life eggs. Now if you're one of these people that have chickens and they produce more than uh, what you want during the summer but uh, not enough in the winter colder months, freeze drying your eggs and um, it, it, you can um, create an um, egg powder uh, from the freeze dried and that turns out beautiful and once again it's just uh, sealing them properly in uh, a dark place, uh, vacuum sealed with an uh, oxygen absorber and stored in a dark place they will last a long time. So what else? Um, breadcrumbs, I think breadcrumbs would be you know bread you can freeze dry but to, just to turn them into crumbs and I think that that is better there was one time I bought a huge bag of breadcrumbs from a bakery because they sold them in that size and I thought it was awesome. The price was awesome. But they were not as dry as what you think. So putting even those, that big bag of uh, breadcrumbs through the freeze dryer would have uh, allowed them to be remove most of the moisture that was still left in them and they would have been good forever. So there's, it, it is one of those things that uh, you decide what you like, you test and dehydrated. I found that um, I did a lot of dehydrating last year or the year before. I have uh, a lot of dehydrated potato uh, little bits and the thing with that is that they take a long time to rehydrate, uh, much more so than what I uh, imagined, whereas freeze-dried take minutes. And that is the big difference. Things that are freeze-dried take anywhere from seconds to minutes to rehydrate, whereas dehydrated foods take, can take hours. So, um, but there are some foods that I don't like freeze-dried. I tried making a... <laughs> pumpkin pie, freeze drying that. Actually, I made it into little tarts, trying to make it small so I didn't have to worry about cutting it up into small bits and pieces. And what I found is that you have the combination of two 
uh, disparaging items, I guess. Your, your pastry has uh, got a lot of oils, and of course, freeze drying uh, anything with a lot of oils is rather difficult. Um, and you have um, the, uh, on, attached to that, you have something with a lot of sweets, and both of them uh, have to be dealt with in a slightly different manner, so the two combined didn't quite work out. I expected the filling to be uh, soft, just like everything else, and melt in your mouth type thing, but it wasn't. It was rock hard, and the pastry was as though it was never freeze dried. So that just didn't turn out to my dissatisfaction. Once again, freeze drying is one of those things that you experiment with, and you determine what you like and what you don't like. I definitely like doing vegetables. I definitely like doing fruits. I definitely like doing milk and eggs in the freeze dryer and um, soups. And I'm sure that chili will work out awesome. There's just so many things I have yet to try. Um, I would not freeze dry chili, uh, chili. I would can it. So there are certain things that you can and it turns out better. And you certain things that you freeze dry and they turn out better and certain things that you just blanch and freeze and the you know vegetables can be just blanched and frozen and they turn out awesome and it, so it is a matter of preference now no one can tell you what is best for you so you have to sit you know you have to experiment and decide what you like and what works for you certainly freeze drying can you can store foods for 25 years uh, it has a, an amazing shelf life or up to 25 years um, but it really depends on the foods that you are working with. So, whereas canning, I think, lasts, oh, on average, two to three years, possibly longer. Some people like to keep canned goods longer. Uh, that is your own canned goods. And, of course, uh, manufactured canned goods, people keep them longer than that. They, some, some folks just ignore the best before date. And the best before date just means that, uh, yes, it is best before that date. It doesn't mean that it is expired <laughs> on that date. Uh, it's just it starts to lose nutrients and it starts to lose a little bit of flavor uh, the longer you keep it. But that doesn't mean it isn't uh, still viable and good food. So <clears throat> a difficult question to answer. So uh, I, the only way I can respond to this lady is say, hey, watch this video, and I'm going to send her uh, her letter back to her saying, please watch this video, and uh, you know you have to experiment for yourself and see what you prefer. There's the other thing I could add: uh, herbs are. You can freeze dry any herb. You can dehydrate any herb, and they'll probably turn out pretty much the same. Herbs I like to air dry. So, yeah, I know a lot of people love to freeze dry them. They say they turn out awesome. Others really love to dehydrate them, and they turn out awesome as well. Personally, I like to air dry them, uh, except for basil. Basil is the only one I will actually freeze. So, there you have it. Uh, if, you know, if, sometimes you just got to do your own thing, experiment and do your own thing. Your kitchen, your rules. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I'm glad to be home, um, but we also would have loved to have stayed longer, should have, uh, you know, if we could have. But um, there's always things to do when you get back home, too. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.